Acevedo. Good to have you here, sir. Hi, Brian. Uh, here at the Third Street Galleries. Very lovely, very lovely indeed. So now, did, um, a little bit about you as an artist. You uh, typically work in paint on canvas. Oil, um, oil painting on canvas. Very good. And uh, these are some of your works that we're surrounded by now. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, did you did you start in Pittsburgh, or were you attracted to come here from elsewhere? Where, where, where does your story begin? Oh, my story began as a little kid on the floor all the time, drawing while, <laughs> while my grandparents and parents and aunts and uncles were all sitting around my, gran my grandmother's house. It was the center location for everything, and I was always on the floor drawing. So it's actually started there. I guess it's like an acorn and becoming an oak tree. It just mm. becomes what it's very going nice. to become. Yes. And so that's actually where it started. I went to the Art Institute of Pittsburgh, and uh, when one gets out of school, they don't really know a whole lot, so it just takes a lifetime of continual, continual study and practice to work on the weak points. And uh, studying the old masters, I've always had tremendous respect for the old masters. They're just, just great as far as their technique and their ability, mm -hmm. and just to be able to, John Sargent was one of my favorites, and just, the respect for that and to even to want to put my foot in their backyard to be able to come a little bit close to what yeah. they're doing has always been an inspiration. Now are, are a lot of your landscapes of Pittsburgh? They're all of the local area. Wherever I travel, my paint kits go with me. I put them in the back of my van and just pull over someplace. I like the way that looks. And since I live in Pittsburgh, Carnegie, everything I paint is usually around here. Wherever I go, I paint. But the majority of paintings are all around here. If you look around, if you look around the uh, studio gallery here, you'll see it. it's around Hopewell and just views from my studio window and, and here's uh, uh, Station Square mm -hmm. back there. So it's just wherever I am. Uh, visually, visually Pittsburgh's a very nice place to paint. Mm -hmm. I was just climbing the hillsides, it has a European feel to it. Uh, all the urban scapes, the alleyways, really nice to look at. And the surrounding areas, uh, all the farmlands, we have the beauty of the land and the, way the landscape, the play of the light on the land is so enticing. And as far as the arts goes, education, I feel that's very important because it teaches children to see beauty, it, to start them at an early age, to take them out into the uh, plain air, so to speak, and for them to begin to see the play of light and begin to see how beautiful things here look and begin to try to capture that beauty at an early age would create a tremendous respect for their environment as they grow older. The, um, the act of painting itself is a great teacher. It teaches one to be able to see differently. <clears throat> one sees shapes, combinations of shapes, and how they relate to one another. It's like geometry. <clears throat> the other is the play of light and color. So it's a combination of all that. Now Station Square, it got me so excited how the, how the light just danced in the river. And it was just continually dancing and just flickering all the time. And I just wanted to try to capture some of that. So how did this gallery uh, get its start? Well, in 1990, I was looking for a place, I was looking for studio space. And looking and looking and looking in 89, 90. And this real estate man said, uh, there's a building that's available for sale. And I said, well, let me take a look at it. So I took a look at it and said, gosh, it has great potential. But the whole idea is to make the move and go for it and just stick with it. And I guess the whole thing is like beauty on a shoestring. People yeah. were giving me paints from their garage and everything, and I would just start painting the place. And the first thing I did was make the place, try to make the place look good. Because if it looks good, it starts to have life to it. And, and it starts to get exciting to look at and starts to become fun. So we start, start doing that. And it's just been a whole gradual process through the years of just beautifying and trying to restore the building back to where it was. Initially, when we first kind of got the gallery looking okay, we would have a lot of uh, events uh, with the uh, local political people and the local businesses, business mixers and things, so that people just start to become familiar with a gallery itself. Mm -hmm. And gradually, gradually, it's always been a dream to, to have the arts to get the arts out to the people, to get the people involved in the arts. We start, uh, we, I'm also a musician, a bassist, and we would get together over here and just do some playing in the evening. And first thing you know, we know some of the local people would start sitting on the steps and start sitting around and listening to the music at night. And so we were doing that, that began to grow. That began to grow, and more and more people were coming, and people start coming from other places over here. And that began to grow. Then all of a sudden we had a Wednesday night jam session, the place was packed. We had about 15 musicians coming in, so we had that going. 
So the music just started to have a life on its life of its own. So we continue with that. So you say it kind of grew organic, kind of grew naturally, mm -hmm. just because of the love of, of what we do. There's yeah. a great energy here, and you can feel that when you come on down. So you uh -huh. know, we certainly encourage everybody to pay you a visit here. I, uh, I imagine that even within these walls and your, your studio upstairs this is a very inspiring place to, to paint and create work, you know, when you're not doing it in, in plain air. Uh, we even have things, we have had philosophers in, teaching philosophy, yogis and swamis coming in just because there's people, at a certain time there's a period when people are just saying, so what's it all about? What's life all about? So the meaning of life. And they can find the answers can, here on Third Street. They can find or the answers them, on, at least, on you know? Third Street. <laughs> so we had swamis here and talking about metaphysics. That's and, fantastic. Yeah, the whole works. We've had, a, wow. we've had a lot going on. Wow. Yeah. So it's a whole process of just perfection of one's work. Very good. I think that's uh, that's my continued goal is Very still good. to be able to do it better and better. And same with the music, to refine it continual, continually. The greatest art form on this whole planet is refinement of the personality. That's the, that's the most toughest and most subtlest. I like that. Can I quote you on that? You can. That you needs can. to be on a t-shirt or a mug. I like that. Yeah. It's, it's personality refinement. So everyone could be an artist. All they have to do is learn how to refine their personality. It could even begin with speech. What's necessary, what's kind, or what's constructive as far as speech goes. Mm. Before one speaks, have that thought. Is it necessary to say this? Is it kind? Is it constructive? So the whole refinement of personality is a great art form. Everyone in the world could do it. And no one even has to know that they're doing it. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> now, we had a conversation earlier about, you know, when you are alone, how you prefer to paint. And that is <laughs> in the nude. Is oh, I this love true? being nude, yeah. Very good. I love being and, nude. Uh, incidentally, Phil doesn't have any pants on right now. You can't see this. But uh, <laughs> um, so I imagine that's very freeing, you know, very, uh, you know, Pete. I am so self conscious, I could never do it. Uh -huh. But, um, uh, what is it about that that really is conducive to good work, in your opinion? It feels free. It feels free. And when one is walking around in the studio, and I have these windows, and there's a nice breeze kind of comes in, you just kind of feel that against the whole body, and it does feel good. And um, it just feels lighter, uh, more relaxed, cooler especially in the summertime. Mm -hmm. So with the windows open, you're actually providing entertainment for the Carnegie <laughs> community as well. <laughs> So this will then perhaps um, make you want to bathe in the river. Then. Make you want to bathe in the river. <laughs> yeah. My only fear with a giant rubber duck. So as I sit here in my tuxedo with my martini, are you at all compelled to paint? You, you have a great face too, I love your face. Now, all right. how many more interviews would you like? <laughs> this, this is, this is, man, what can we do for you? Uh, well, flattery will get you everywhere here on Berg Vivant. Very good.